Hello. You can just call me Belle, as in ring my bell. As you know, many Filipino nurses work overtime in many hospitals. And the reason why is because they send money back home to the Philippines to help their families. In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to share with you the not-so-secret path from scarcity to prosperity. $50 changed my life forever. You know, in the Philippines, $50 goes a long way. Although here in North America, it can only buy you a few cups of venti lattes at Starbucks. Now, with a show of hands, how many of you left the Philippines for economic reasons? Now, how many of you left for professional advancement? Can you show your hands? Like most of you, I left the Philippines for both economic reasons and professional advancement. I remember August 24, 1982. I took the last picture with my mother outside the Manila International Airport. Unfortunately, it was the last picture I had with her because she died the year after I left the Philippines. So with three other friends, I joined three friends, and we landed in San Francisco the following day. It was a long flight. And immediately at the San Francisco airport, I asked the security guard, Sir, are we in California? I remember it. My brother lives in California. He said, Yes, ma'am. You're in San Francisco, California. We had a few hours layover in San Francisco, so we went to dinner. And fortunately, when we came back, the plane already departed. Oh, no! So I told my friends, no worries. Let me call my brother. Hello? Can you pick us up at the San Francisco airport? My brother said, are you kidding? You're about five to six hours from Los Angeles. <laughs> so anyway, no worries. We arrived in Miami. We had got jobs immediately. And I remember at the end of the month, I would send most of my paycheck to my mother. I'll take the bus, go to the remittance office, and there goes my money. And at the end of the month, I look at my bank account. There's not much left. So what did I do? I moved on a few years after to a much more lucrative job. I ended up at the University of Miami. Here at the University of Miami, I was a little bit of a Filipino trailblazer. I actually became a research administrator for our department. And I also opened the Center for Liver Diseases at the University of Miami, which is actually the precursor for the current hospital. I also became the first Filipino liver and GI transplant coordinator as well as a nurse practitioner. So I did pretty well, met a nice guy, and we lived a pretty good life. We were dinks. We were double income, no kids. So what did we do? We traveled the world, and usually when we go to the Philippines, we take business class. And unfortunately, I noticed in myself then when I take business class, I felt uncomfortable. I didn't feel like I belonged to that section. The other thing I noticed when I go home to the Philippines is that it seemed like most of the colleges and the universities, especially in my small city, produced a lot of people with MBAs. I know there's a lot of MBAs nowadays, but you know, this MBA is different. This is what we call masters in begging and asking. You know, you go to one street, you, s you meet a former classmate, she needs help on a child who's in college. Another one has somebody at, in the hospital who's sick. Honestly, we didn't mind. In fact, collectively in the Philippines, our family educated six nurses, a geologist, engineers, a veterinarian. So, you know, we really didn't mind. We helped everybody because what was our purpose? We wanted to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. That's what my mother told us. So anyway, unfortunately, the Great Recession hit. The Great American Recession, where we lost some of our stock market, as well as some money in the real estate. Until one day, 
I woke up with a severe headache. And my husband brought me to the emergency room. They found out my blood pressure was 200 over 115. And the doctor immediately asked that I go for a cardiac catheterization because we had a family history of heart problems. So I consented, and I looked at my husband. You could see tears in his eyes. And I wanted to hug him. I gave him a big kiss. And I said, I'll be fine. But this is when I started bargaining with God. Those last few minutes before the procedure started was, felt like eternity to me. I asked God, please get me out of this ordeal. There's more that I want to do in this life. In fact, I wanted to spend a lot of time with my husband and my family. But the most important thing I felt was that I still felt like I need to make a difference in the world. Thankfully, I got out of that ordeal. And I thought, maybe I'll go back to the University of Miami. But unfortunately, every time I take my check my blood pressure, it goes up to 200 or 100 when I decided to go back. So I said, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't. And on the day that I said I won't go back, guess what? My blood pressure goes down to within normal limits, 120. So I said, you know what? Let me just take a few weeks off. So I went back to the Philippines, and I thought, well, maybe we should just focus in the project that my husband and I had collaborated with an NGO after Typhoon Haiyan, which was to restore agricultural lands in the Philippines. But after three weeks there, we decided it wasn't time for us to live permanently. So I went back to Miami, and this is the famous phone call I got from a relative. Hello, do you think you can continue giving $50 to so-and-so? I haven't been back to work yet. I still have medical bills to pay. Wow. But then I vacillated too. I said, hmm, maybe I should just withdraw some of my retirement money and some savings. But then I said, after 25 years, I still have to help everybody back home? So I told myself, I need to set boundaries. Unfortunately, when you set boundaries, you alienate your family. After I said no, a relative even called me and said, you know, the reason why you're having problems financially is because you lived a high lifestyle. Phone calls from family were non-existent anymore for the next few months. Even a like on Facebook on any photos that we posted, I didn't get any. So I started contemplating. And this is the time when I dug deep into my soul, dug deep internally, and I worked with mentors and coaches. And finally, I was able to transform myself. And this is the reason why this is my mission, to transform nurses as well as overseas Filipino workers so they we can also move from scarcity to prosperity without losing our relationships with our family. Let me tell you a story of one of our clients. She was referred to me just a few months ago, in fact. She had severe depression. She was actually couldn't drive. She had so much anxiety going back to work because she was fired after working so hard, double overtimes every time, just to help her family back home as well as here in the United States. Finally, she ended up getting divorced. Within a few months of working with her, I was able to get her back to drive. She ended up getting a job that's even what she really wanted. And on top of that, she got some bonuses, one of which is she met a really nice, financially independent gentleman. She got an unexpected inheritance, and on top of that, her 401k, had tripled. 
On the other hand, another person who was referred to me did not decide to work with me yet. Currently, she's still working five to six days a week overtime, helping her family and the grandchildren of her brothers back home in the Philippines for college education. And at the same time, she has a family, relative, family member who's living with them right now for the, almost a year now. And what does she do? On her days off, she's the chauffeur so that she can help find them a job. Her teenage boys are complaining because she has no time with the family anymore. Unfortunately, I know this is part of our culture. We want to help everybody. Now, let me ask you, how long do you want to stay and get stuck in the scarcity mentality? Many financial gurus tell us that if you want to achieve true wealth and financial freedom, the first thing you need to do is actually remove the mental blocks that prevent us from achieving financial independence. If you are ready to make that leap and not work overtime all the time, schedule a consultation with me. Check my website. It's www.familyabundancecoach.com. Again, it's www.familyabundancecoach.com. By the way, the week before I left for Canada, Liz, the client whom I had helped just a few months ago, she actually sent me a text. And I said, Coach, please don't forget to let the people know. I'm great. Well, in tears, yeah. For giving me a second chance in life. So if you are ready to get from scarcity to prosperity, there is a different path. You don't need to be working overtime all the time. On the other hand, you could also just, you know, as I've said, ring me a bell. <laughs>